Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Clueless 8, and this is the end of the day report for Wednesday, May, I'm sorry, Thursday, May 29, 2014. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500. I'm going to show you a similar chart as I did with the Dow Jones Industrial Average so that we have a, 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 a clean uh, uh, comparison on uh, what exactly is going on. Um, there are different ways to uh, look at the market, different charts to interpret. So tonight I'm just sticking to this particular format. So here we are on the S&P 500. As you can clearly see, we have uh, we are trading on the upper. We are kissing the middle middle uh, um, channel here on this triple channel highway. If you want to look at it that way, and at this point we are also on the top of the Bollinger, and. Um, and we, it looks uh, it looks like we might be uh, we are uh, short term overbought. Now, if for some reason, and I'm looking at all different scenarios, uh, we break out, we have broken out over the 1900 mark, as you can clearly see from this uh, here from my uh, cursor. Um, this is a clean br breakaway um, uh, runaway uh, uh, runaway candles. So it looks like we're going to hit resistance here at around 1926 on the S&P, which is pretty much uh, six S&P points away from here, another 40 points or so. I'm sorry, another 50 points on the Dow or so. And at that point, we should expect a natural consolidated pullback that brings us down uh, and tests the 1900 level minimum. If we break that, we're going to we're going to come down and test the 1895, and then the confluence of these three major lines. Um, these the 34, uh, the 50-day, all of them, you know, which are running in tandem with each other. Okay, a confluence of the 9, 20, 9, 13, 22, 34, 50 day moving averages right here. They're all bunched in together and moving, you know, moving uh, um, in tandem. So this is a major support level, uh, which in the lower end would be 1860. Uh, worst case scenario, we come down and test the lower channel at 1844, um, and then of course there is the 1814 level, uh, which was the low of, uh, which was the uh, mid-April low. Okay, so you can this gives you a very clear picture of what exactly is going on with the market without having any specific day-to-day -day timing as to what might happen. Uh, as traders, we think that we know every time the market's going to flick up a point or down a point. Um, try not to get into that habit of ticking every five minutes. I'm guilty of that many times because I'm sometimes I'm doing short-term trades. So what happens in the next 15 minutes is very important uh, to uh, you know making a decent sum of money. But in reality, the big money is made uh, by looking at these type of wave patterns. Okay. Not to say that the volatility is not intense and these wave patterns can go completely uh, berserk and confuse the heck out of us, which it, the market has managed to do for many months now. So saying all that, uh, you, have, uh, you have the 1860 level on the downside. And if we do break out over this channel after a little consolidation phase, that would be over 1930, then we have the upper end of this uh, band, as you can see, uh, which, is, uh, which is basically between 1900 and 2000 that's another 100 points um, 100 point band as you can clearly see um, this is we are very much in an uptrend in the market there's nothing here in the internals that's telling us that there's a big danger sign this big fat blue line climbing up is on balance volume and it's uh, only recently as you can clearly see uh, money starting to flow back into the market in a big way because this on balance volume is going at a 45 degree angle up okay you can see that very clearly just to get a print here okay the on balance volume right now is running at a clip of 38 38.4 million whatever that means and um and if you look back, uh, let's say down here, uh, we were running at uh, 480,000. So you can clearly see, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, uh, that money is starting to flow back in the market. 
that's a significant thing that you don't hear about that much see that that's a very powerful signal that this market does have sustained strength because after all it's liquidity that drives the market not what you think or I think what the Elliott wave theorist thinks or what our cash and things or what Rich Santelli or uh, Leesman thinks uh, the market moves on liquidity there's liquidity coming in and that's helping the market uh, move higher okay clearly see this all right so that's S&P 500 let's take a quick look at uh, the Nasdaq composite I gotta set this chart up so it's a little bit uh, should have done that before Oh, well, the lines are drawn somewhat so I'm gonna change the color of this and hopefully I don't run out of time on this video thing okay there's one and as you can clearly see it's broken over, over the 50 over the 34 day moving average which I was talking about extensively down here and down here you guys are living proof that uh, I was uh, very correct about that accurate about the assessment that the Nasdaq and the Russell would play catch up and uh, that's exactly what happened this is nice okay so you can clearly see here also that the Nasdaq now is looking to attack this particular mid uh, channel here uh, which would then if it takes that up it's going to go up here at around 4300 talked about it many 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 times and once it goes there the Nasdaq could very well come and test its highs around the 4400 level or 4380 level and uh, and possibly move higher because this Bollinger looks like it's starting to creep it's starting to turn up and once it starts to do that you get those seven hundred dollar apples and uh, and price line at fifteen hundred okay um, it's just the way this this market works so this is very important to monitor very positive that we have crossed over the 34 and the 50 more importantly these lines have to start to turn up and the way it starts to turn up these very powerful moving averages longer term moving averages similar to what happened here where it was crossing down then it started to turn up is prices have to stay in this have to stay above these levels 41 le uh, 70 41 60 uh, for a period of a uh, couple of weeks and then you see, see this lines turn up okay simple stuff look what's happening down here this is extremely extremely powerful what's happening down here is the MACD just making this bigger so we can see that okay the MACD this is very powerful I showed this this similarity is just you know anyone could have seen this I don't know sometimes it's just too easy and no one wants to believe and I think that's exactly what happened here with this market so here we have the the the, the MACD 1226 crossover like we had back in November 2012 look what happened to the market after that same thing happened here I've shown this a zillion times I pointed out that this was a very similar pattern and that's exactly what's going on MACD uh, the on balance volume which is the net positive uh, net volume positive minus negative buying minus selling and that's obviously moving up it's positive and right now is at 56 versus minus 56 that it was here it's exactly a you know 100 um, percent it, it's exactly a uh, 100 point uh, standard deviation up from where it was huh minus 56 and then now plus 56 what a coincidence some mathematical stuff bottom line is Nasdaq is looking fantastic don't try to be a hero and try to short it too much on any sort of swing trade try to keep the shorts on an intraday basis because this market um, you know this market is powerful and uh, people are refusing to believe that okay that covers this part and I'm gonna move on to the next set of uh, indices to cover the Russell 2000 and the biotech